So, Ralph Breaks the Internet, the sequel to Wreck-It Ralph. Um, and I, you know, Wreck-It Ralph, I, I'll, I'll come clean with how much how I felt about Wreck-It Ralph. I thought it was good. I thought um, it did get a little bit lost in its uh, in its video game references, and mainly its candy puns. <laughs> I think it got a little lost there. But I, I dug the world, uh, I dug the characters, and I thought it, that it was a lot of fun. And so I was looking forward to the sequel. It's like, okay, so the sequel is going to expand it to, uh, to to the internet. So let's we'll we'll, we'll see what we'll see what they can do with that. See, maybe they can uh, bring bring some more character to it. Maybe they can you know find find more jokes. I mean, it's the internet. You can find tons and tons of material here. And so uh, it it kind of it, it feels like okay. Here's the good news and the bad news. The good news is it's still fun. Uh, it's it's still very it's still it's like as with like the best of like the Walt Disney Studio uh, animated films from the from the animation studio, not Pixar. Um, it it does a great job savaging the tropes uh, as a lot of these Disney films have been doing. Um, it has a lot of fun with the material. It's very clever. Uh, Rich Moore does does what he usually does. He does put a lot of effort into assembling this world, as does the Disney Animation Studio with all their stuff. Um, and uh, unfortunately, it does become a little bit lost in the references. But it, but but I got I got a hand it to it. It it still got me with its characters and uh, and and its story here. Okay, so so let's talk about the story. Okay, so. What it is is, you know, life in the arcade is is, is peaceful. There's there's harmony again. Uh, you know, Sugar Rush has Penelope as a regular character. Uh, Penelope von Schweetz, voiced by Sarah Silverman. Uh, but she feels like she's stagnating. She feels like, you know, there's there's not much more. You know, I'm stuck in the same rut of, you know, like the same old tracks, you know, day in, day out. And so uh, uh, Ralph from Fix It Felix, who was voiced by uh, John C. Riley, so I was like, well, okay, maybe uh, you know I'm I'm comfortable, but you know maybe maybe I can make life better for her. And he tries to you know do what he can for Sugar Rush, but in doing so, he actually ends up breaking the game. And so in order to fix the game, they've got to go to the internet to get a part. And and that's essentially all you need to know because once they actually get to the internet through a through a Wi-Fi router, which is actually pretty clever how this goes about. Um, then it proceeds from, you know, like a mounting series of like quests, like, you know, like, where do we go for the part? How do we get the money? Where do we get the money from? What's the best way to do it? How, how do we, you know, how do we use the internet to our advantage? Um, and it kind of builds up from there. Well, at the same time, they also, they also draw attention to the fact that, you know, Ralph and Penelope are trying to come into, trying to come to terms with the fact that they are best friends, but they got to realize they got to, you know, they got to be apart sometimes. Sometimes they have different needs and wants that, you know, they got to, you know, sometimes they do have to be distant, you know, so, sometimes that's, that's just the way it goes. And they got to learn that lesson the hard way. Okay, so, um, so essentially, once they get to the internet, you have all these different characters that they meet there. Uh, you have a search engine coordinator who's played by Alan Tudyk, who, who feels like, um, he, he feels like almost kind of like a, like a Rocky and Bullwinkle character, like similar to, um, you know, like, uh, Mr. Peabody, something like that. He, he's pretty great. I, I love that character design. Um, you have uh, Shank, who's a racer from a Grand Theft Auto style game, uh, and of course she's she's one of those kind of like you know you know like kind of like leather bound street racers who uh, uh, who Penelope absolutely adores. She's like 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 oh man I love this character I wanna I wanna stay in her game. Uh, Shanks is voiced by uh, Gal Gadot, and then you have uh, yes I think I'm saying her name correctly right there. Um, and she's an algorithm for this uh, kind of like YouTube style. It's not actually YouTube, and they do use a lot of actual names here. But it's it's a kind of a competing video service, um, and and she uh, she's voiced by um, uh, Taraji P Henson, and she basically wants to she wants to make Ralph a star. She's like, oh, you, you need help? You you want to get some money? I can get you money. I can make you a star on the internet by just doing all these viral videos. And then you have Alfred Molina um, playing playing a few different characters here, some shady characters from the dark web. And there's there's tons of other characters they made here. Now, of course, I I know what everyone's gonna be thinking. Like th there there was this fear since the beginning, since the first trailer started coming out, that um, that this film was just gonna be Disney's version of the Emoji Movie. Like a lot of people are gonna like, oh, it's just the Emoji Movie where they go explore all these these internet apps, and then they're gonna make Disney references the whole time, just nothing but Disney references and online references and stuff like that. And I didn't have this fear even when the trailers came out because and and here's the reason why because okay this is from the walt disney animation studio they have done big hero 6 they have done zootopia they have done moana these films all have very detailed and defined worlds to them 
they're they're not just slapped together jokes. There's there's actually creativity behind them, and I think that comes from both the studio, and uh, and from Rich Moore's direction. Uh, Rich Moore really puts a lot of effort into making sure that a lot of this like internet lingo they're throwing up here doesn't sound so much like Tron. It sounds like it actually makes sense. Uh, it, it, enough so that you could have an adventure here where, they, where, you know, they go to, they go to like eBay, they go to like the YouTube, they, you know, they, they browse by like Twitter and Google and all that. They, they build up all this, all these elements of this environment. So it feels like it makes enough sense <laughs> that you understand it here. Um, where I think the film falters, unfortunately, is that because it gets so, uh, it, because it loves so much of, of, you know, staging this world and the references, I think that it kind of hinders the relationship between Ralph and Penelope, which is interesting. It's it's this interesting relationship of, of kind of learning to let go um, and trying not to be so insecure and paranoid about what you really want. But I feel like because everything else is kind of rushed in the film with all the references and all that, uh, their, 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 <laughs> their, their relationship conflict has to be rushed just as quickly to the point where it has to be really blunt and to the point where the ending pretty much has Ralph literally battling his insecurities about about letting go of Penelope. Uh, so I, th I think that kind of hinders the film, although I will say this. By the time you get to the ending, I'll admit, it, it did get to me. For, for as... For as like as as blunt as the film became with trying to like hammer home these points about about Ralph and Penelope, that ending really got to me. It's 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 a it's a pretty close to a tearjerker. Not not quite a full tearjerker. It's it's nowhere near the levels of like you know like Inside Out or Coco. But it's it it, it kind of got to me. I was surprised that it actually got to me in the end there. Um, but that being said, the, the I, I feel like that, that that's a great part of the film, but I think the best aspect is by far the savaging of uh, of both the internet and both like the Disney tropes. And I mean, we we've seen this and stuff like you know like Moana, they comment on princesses and stuff like that. And there's been references to other Disney films here and there. Um, but I really I really kind of like how like when even though it's kind of like a distraction when Penelope gets to um when Penelope gets to, like, the, the Disney section of the internet, she meets all the princesses, and they basically talk shop, saying, like, you know, hey, isn't it weird that, you know, like, a, a big strapping man has to come save us? Uh, and then they end up talking about, you know, how, you know, wearing dresses isn't that, you know, comfortable and stuff like that. And I, I was surprised by how funny it was with kind of, like, the... it's It feels like... Well, let's relate it here. Okay, so Rich Moore's worked on stuff like The Simpsons. It has that kind of Simpsons vibe of making these parodies, where where they're making these references, but they're also making these kind of like smart jabs at them as well. Uh, like, th there's a great bit involving um, fans complaining uh, about about incontinuity in Marvel, and they're complaining to Groot, expecting Groot to answer. That's that's cute. That's cute and clever. It's 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 pretty pretty intelligent here. Th there's also a lot of great little. Uh, Easter eggs in the film too, if if you're looking for them. Like a, probably one of my favorites is like I, I won't reveal all of them, but one of my favorites is that at one point Ralph is looking through like the the remains of like the old internet or something like that, stuff with like broken sites. You can see a girder in the background that says Geo Cities. Just don't even they don't even draw attention to it. It's just like oh in the background it's Geo Cities. Just perfect. That's that's all you need. That's all you need with that reference. <laughs> um. And yeah, in that aspect, I I, I kind of dug the film. I I, I liked how uh, it incorporated a lot of aspects of the internet and actually did it intelligently, as opposed to you know like something like the Emoji Movie, which probably just picked up like a teen magazine and just said, oh I I think I know everything about the internet. I'll just slap some buzzwords here and there. Uh, and no, oh, this this film actually puts a lot of effort into making its world both uh, both detailed uh, and have a lot of character and also be believable. And, uh, and and for that, I really do give the film credit, even though I think it, it does kind of stag, even though I, I think it does kind of like stagnate with with the um, the, the the character chemistry. Uh, I, I think I, I think it's on about like the same level as the first one, which is kind of a disappointment because you, you kind of want to see it go places. Um, in particular, uh, there is kind of like a bookended segment between uh, between Fix It Felix Jr., voiced by Jack McBriar. And, uh, and and Calhoun, which is the, the military soldier voiced by uh, Jane Lynch, uh, they have kind of, I, I won't reveal what their plot line is, but they do have an interesting arc, if there were an arc. It's just kind of like a, like a bookended plot here, which is, it kind of feels like a disappointment. It does have a nice joke to it. I do like that aspect. Um... I, I just I just wish they they explored it a little bit more. I, I wish they explored a little bit more of the characters as much as they explored the world. Which, to be fair, 
the world is fun here. It is a lot of fun. I love the savagery they have towards towards Disney, where they kind of mock themselves and their own tropes. It's it's a lot of fun from that aspect. So I I gotta give them credit for that. And so in terms of like world building, you know, once again, Walt Disney's uh, uh the Walt Disney Animation Studio they do what they do best here, which is make a great world. Um, and despite the fact that the characters get a little bit pushed aside here and there, they mostly hold up. And I do kind of like the the ultimate message of the story here. So. So it's 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 just as fun. I guess that's the way to describe it. So for Ralph Breaks the Internet, three and a half out of